Hope you lovelies. How are you all doing? Welcome back to Wobble Crafting, where we learn, grow and craft together. In today's tips and tricks session, I want to show you how to use those little remnants of paper that is always left after we're done with a project. And if you're like me, I normally use till the very last bit of paper. I want to show you how to make clusters real quick, real fast, without overthinking it. I have a whole bunch of little scraps of paper. Now you will say, what on earth? But aren't these just the sweetest? I mean, they're really gorgeous. So why throw them away? Some of them were from other projects that I've done recently. You will maybe recognize some of them, but let's dive right into it. You need a pair of scissors. Um, craft knife is always a good idea. Some glue and paper, just paper. We will get to adding the little bits and bobs in a second or so. But first, let's get the bases together. These strips I showed you the other day how to make um, Paper clips with hidden paper clips. I'm going to just snip this one in three. No measurement, just the base because it's cardstock. I think it will be awesome just to add this. What do we need? Some liquid glue. And we're going to start layering. Don't think about it. If you start thinking, it will become a very long process. Snip this away, adding some glue in the middle. If this can just run down, it will be helpful. So I will just turn it on its side. Just a bit of glue. We can add that on the side, a bit of the brown showing out. Don't think about it, don't think about it. The minute that you start thinking is when you're not going to get done with any of this. Because, yes, you are thinking it's not going to fit, it's not this, it's not that. You can do some sewing if you want to. I've never done sewing, simply because my sewing machine is not out and I have to plug it in and all kinds. Even the tiniest bit of paper can be added um, to this. I'm going to just take that slither of paper and I'm adding this. There's some beautiful text on it, so that will be added there. We need something else on this side. Let's see what else we have. There's a bit of vellum. I kind of like that too. Just some interest. And I would want, let's say, a piece of this. And I'm just going to tear it away from me, a bit towards me. It changes the feel of the paper. And there we have that one. Might not add all of it, and it's fine. You can use normal paper, um, glue stick, I mean. You don't have to use liquid glue. I'll just pull that last bit off. And there is a little cluster that you can add to any one of your projects. I want to just add a little something there. I showed you the other day on my Instagram, just coloring, and this is where this is coming from. I had Paint white copy paper. If I turn it over, you will see it's white scrap paper. And then I stamp. That is part of it. I showed you how it looks on the plane. And then this is what it looks like if you stamp on top of the, the inked area. There we have that. A little cluster worth scraps that you can now add to your projects wherever you want to. Let's do another few. We still got some of this. I love using these papers. It gives added interest, some texture. And yes, it's paper that I use. Sometimes I print on it. I don't always get craft paper, so I have to make use of what I have. There's a nice strip. We can tear a piece down from there. Don't overthink it, just put it together. And if you stick with your, your theme papers, like the vintage field papers, then everything will match anyway. I would love to have a piece of this included. I hope this is... Oh, it's plain. I want a bit of that. Kind of like the feel of it. I'll just tear a bit at the bottom. I don't like the, the smoothness of it. So the smallest bit can be used. You can stamp on that if you want to. Anything, really anything goes. There we have a bit that was from a cardstock. I'll add that there. Yes, I folded the ends because it was to trim it off. And maybe we can add that tiny little bit that I just torn off there. Don't want to close all of that now. I want to show that layer. Maybe move this a bit in and we can add whatever we want to still add there. Do we have something else? Let's add that one because I've got the bit here on my table. I can just grab the little bits and bobs tray. I need to fold that one up again. And it doesn't have to all just be on top. I can add it there. And there we have two little clusters with pieces that would have been thrown away. And they now all look more or less the same. Last little bitty with this one. We can maybe move away from there. 
Let's do another one, not the brown one. I'll use a bit of this pink paper strip just to show you that the color palette is still quite vintagey, even though we're now moving into pinks. We have that part, and then again, just tear off a piece of that. You can do some hand stitching if you so wish. Literally anything. This piece of paper. It's got a tiny bit of pink in it. I just want to tear off that edge as well, just so that it's a little bit more ragged. And of course we can add a full postage stamp in the pink tones because we have that. I'll just grab one and yes, this is not vintage. You can see it's quite bright, but for that we will be toning it down just using a little ink dauber. And hold it in your hand too. And we've got all these fruit flies all over bothering me now. We can add that little one on here. And it fits beautifully with our theme. I can even move it up a tiny bit, but the glue stuck already. There we go. So Let's do another one. I would love to use this. So, last bit of this, seeing that I have it on the workbench. And a bit of this. I love this paper. Coffee dyed in a torn, but it's got the most beautiful edge, which is just amazing. Look at that texture. And I don't want to glue it down because I want to show that texture. I'll keep that one. And maybe a bit of this paper. Again, it doesn't have to be big pieces, it can be small. Have that look there. Maybe use a skewer and just curl the ends of that paper on top. Maybe the bottom part too. Just for more added texture. You can even use your pair of scissors for that. A bit of inking there just to bring in the brown. And let's see what other paper we have here that we can maybe add. Just a bit of glue. Don't want to close that now. Let's add it here at the bottom. So we still have that wonderful texture showing. We don't want to cover that though. So there we have another one. And quick, 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 quick. So you can sit and play with this, make some wonderful clusters and work off those scraps. That's sometimes. I want to show you one more before we go. I'll use this again. Snip that off. Keep it straight. I'll use this. This was from some vintage paper that I cut the end, but this was where I torn it. And I love that look. And it's really, this is quite brittle. It really is fragile. You just look at it and it tears. So let's just add that there. And we can bolt this way now on this. You don't have to just do it the one side. And with that, I mean, you can add any type of paper. This was a bit of music paper that I'll just add. Oh, sorry for that in your ears. I want to show the pink and then we can bolt this way. So there's another piece that has got like almost a coral color to it, but still in the toned down vintage palette, if you want to call it that. There's a bit of a stamp. Now I've got more glue down here and that's not a problem. We can always use a bit of this just to glue it down on and bring the browns in. Glue this on there. And yes, you can just simply tear it off so you can bolt your layers any which way you want. Now truly any which way you want. A slither of this brown and just tear off the bottom. And then you can, if you want to, just put it on a bigger piece of paper with that, I mean, something like this, or turn it around. That subtext, it doesn't matter. Whatever you feel is right. I just want a little focal point there. So, yes, you guessed it. I'll go for a postage stamp, but this time I want to go for a little flower one. I think this is from 
think monarch runs or any one of those I can't remember. I had done this so long back that I can't even remember. And then we can add that there. And there is that. How awesome. Look at that. We've got now five already and in really no time whatsoever. I would want a bit of sturdy paper. I like this. Let's take that one. It's not sturdy though. I just said sturdy paper. But this is not sturdy. I like that. So I will be building on it this way. I like these numbers though. And this is from the very vintage paper. It's really very brittle. Honestly, it is so, so, so brittle. Bit of glue. And if you don't want to cover up whatever you've used or added there already, you can add another piece of paper for your base. I would love to include this somehow. I think there. And let's see what else. I'll just tear off that part. Maybe what else? What else can we add? Oh, look at this little strip of paper. I'm going to incorporate that. Really, just a bit that was cut off the side, obviously, when I trimmed it for some project. And, and I want to include that at the bottom here. There we go. That works fine. And then, what else can we include there? Got the brown. I'm going to just cut this little bit. Just a bit of fuzzy cutting as the focal point and rough cutting, not most perfect. Just going to trim that a little bit and a bit of glue there. And there's another, another cluster. It can be added onto any cardstock if you so wish. If you want to bring in the browns, you can add it to a bit of pink. Or just bring out the browns in there, a bit of the pinkness, or you can leave it as it is. So there we have it. I will continue off camera making a few more, but there we have some beautiful clusters without thinking too much about it. Oh, this one still needs a little focal point. Let's grab the little bits and bobs tray for a sec. The bits and bobs tray is really, really needing some TLC too. I need to actually add a few more things there. Let's see if I put that there, it will cover it. This is a bit big. I need something small, uh, truly small. Maybe you can't see, but I'm rummaging through here to find something that I can actually include. I don't want to cover that texture, so it really needs something other up there. I kind of like that. I'll go with that one. That way I do not close up the texture. I'll just ink this a little bit just to get that color going. And add a bit of glue and we'll add it on top there. So this part will have glue. And I need to just maneuver it in underneath that. So that, and even if I close that top part, I still have the texture of this one at the bottom. There we have it. Life is better with friends. And then we have six little clusters done and dusted that's ready to be included. You might ask how and where you can add it to. If this was a journal card, no colors won't go. Let me do the, the brownish one. It will just look better on the yellow. You can add it on a journal card. Even if you have like a tag. I've got a tag here that is not completed yet. It still needs something on top, but it could have been done on that. If it's a brown, let's see what else I have. Add a little craft incident where I spilled some water. This is some paper that I received in a rug. 
Karak is a random act of kindness. You can include that. You can make it into a hidden paper clip. So that can also be done. And it will just make an absolute magnificent piece. Thank you for joining me today. Go try and make some clusters for yourself with your scraps. It's an absolute beautiful scrap buster project. And you can literally use whatever you have that you have been working on. Um, those little scraps normally pile up real quick and soon can be overwhelming to use. But you can make some beautiful little things with that that you can then incorporate into your junk journal project. If you want to see more useful content like this, give me a thumbs up. And as always, you can share the videos with your friends, ask them to, to subscribe to, and I will appreciate it if you subscribe as well. See you back soon. Goodbye.